car on select new Chevrolet and GMC vehicles, plus a $1,500 trade-in bonus on select Silverados and Sierras. You put all that together with some big couple discounts, and you have a tremendous buying experience. So stop on into the dealership or check us out online at couplecars.com. You'll be glad you did. All deals with approved credit. Too many people believe that chronic pain, allergies, or illness are permanent and something you're stuck with. Novotny Nutrition and Wellness has been proving that narrative wrong for 29 years and changing lives for the better in the process. Their team is trained in the newest, most advanced pain relieving techniques and ways to deal with toxins, allergies, pollution, and emotion that make you ill. Call today for a free consultation at 531-254-5695 or go to NovotnyNutritionAndWellness.com. Novotny Nutrition and Wellness, located at 7th and Superior. Working at Continental in Lincoln isn't a job, it's a career. And right now they've raised wages again and they're hiring for production operators at $24.11 per hour, which grows to $28.27 per hour within three years. Skilled trade positions now start at $32.76 per hour with opportunities to make more based on certifications. Continental also has salary jobs available and great benefits, plus medical and prescription costs at very low premiums. Dental, vision, and life insurance are offered at no premium cost to the associates with increased bonuses and vacation for new hires. To learn more or to apply, go to continental-jobs.com with keyword Lincoln. Come work at Continental today. Mary Ellen Food for the Soul. Smoked meats, amazing sides. The only problem when they fix you a plate is that at some point, that plate will be empty. But hear me out. What if that plate was never empty? That dream can be your reality with the Mary Ellen's Express Lunch Buffet. From 11 to 2 every Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and even Saturday, one price, all you can eat, and it even comes with a drink. Tell your boss you're taking a long lunch and get down there. Mary Ellen's Food for the Soul at 29th and Pine Lake. Let them fix you a plate. This is Lincoln's home for sports talk on the FM dial. The home of Kansas City Royals baseball. KNTK FM Firth, 93.7 The Ticket. This is Adam Carricker on The Ticket. Position right of the quarterback out of the shotgun. First and 20, jailbreak screen in the air. It is tipped. It is intercepted by Carricker. Live from the heart of Lincoln, America, eight-year NFL vet and All-American defensive lineman, Adam Carricker. Shotgun snap to Everett. He's got the left arm going, and now he's got a whole lot of Adam Carricker. He rips him down inside the 25-yard line. On 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com, here's your host, Adam Carricker. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to Adam Carricker on the ticket. All right, each and every Monday from noon. Well, today is from noon to 1240 because there's College World Series baseball games that the ticket's going to be covering. Do not miss. Do not miss coverage of the College World Series. I'm also going to be joined here in about five minutes by a former All-American, a two-time first-team All-Big 12 performer, Mr. Jared Crick, one of the best defensive linemen to play at the University of Nebraska. We're going to talk quickly about Jordy Ball. All right, I gave my thoughts last week, if you missed it on my Character Chronicles show, but I'll give them briefly here. Going to talk to Mr. Jared Crick. Going to do the people segment at the end of the show. Send in your questions, your comments, your concerns. Call or text 402-464-5685. It's 402-464-5685. It is the people segment, the last 10 minutes of each and every show that I do here on the ticket each and every week, the fastest hour or this week, the fastest 40 minutes on the radio each and every week here in the great state of Nebraska. Now, the College World Series. I've, I've always wondered this, and I want to know your, your thoughts on this. Again, call or text. All right, that number I gave you, 402-464-5685. Let me know your thoughts on this. Why is college baseball talked about so much less than college football, college basketball? Just, like, why? I don't understand it. Like, college football has a college game day. College basketball has a college game day. I've never actually watched that uh, college game day in basketball. I think I'm missing out. i got to check that out next college basketball season. But why is college baseball not treated similarly? Why is college softball not treated similarly? I've always wondered that. Is it because college basketball players, like, you have to spend one year in college basketball so you know you're seeing the best players in, in basketball in college for at least one year? And in college football, it's at least three years before you can go pro. you got to be three years out of high school. I guess technically you could sit on your butt for three years after high school, then try to go pro. Good luck with that. Maurice Collette tried to sit on his butt for, what was it, a year or two, and then it didn't go great. He also negotiated a contract with no guaranteed money. A lot of confidence in yourself, not a great business move. Still one of the best true freshman running backs I've ever seen. But I digress. 
Is it because some guys go straight to the pros? That could make sense. I've always wondered, is it the, it's, it's, is it the aluminum bats? Is it, does it make it feel more amateur-ish, which we all know college sports is, well, it's getting less amateur. It's with NIL and things of that nature, but that's a conversation for another day. Is it the aluminum bats? It just makes it feel less than the pros who have wood bats. Let me know. I've always wondered that. It's always been interesting to me why college baseball is not treated on the same and or similar level as college football, college basketball. And I will give my thoughts about Jordy Nelson here shortly. I do believe we have Jared Crick coming on in about two to three minutes. So tune in for that phenomenal interview. Okay. You know what? Let's, let's go ahead and let's chat about Jordy Ball real quick. All right. This is, you could argue, the pitcher from Stanford. Obviously, her ERA at one point was 0. 0.51, 0.51, unheard of. Jordy's was right around one or just under 1.0, which was also phenomenal. But she's a two-time national champ at Oklahoma, two-time All-American, very passionate player, which obviously draws people in as well. Transfers from OU to Nebraska. All right. So I've been asked, what is getting the face of collegiate softball mean for the Huskers? It's huge. Okay, think if there was a two-time national champion quarterback – who also won the Heisman Trophy from Alabama that transferred to play at the University of Nebraska in football. How big would that be? It'd be huge. This is a softball equivalent of that. Nebraska softball had only sold a few hundred tickets for next season. Now They're now approaching uh, 3,000 pre-sold tickets, things of that nature. Now, the next question is, is it championship or bust now for the softball team? They won the conference two years ago, and then you add Jordy Ball to this. Here's what I'll tell you. We better at least be playing for a Big Ten championship if not winning it. Okay, we better be going deep into the Super Regionals if not in the College World Series next year. There's no, no reason for it, no excuse for it. So a pitcher in baseball, when they're on the mound, they can make as big or bigger impact than anybody on the field. But they don't – if you're a starter, you only pitch once every four days as a general rule. In softball, they can pitch a lot more. They can legit pitch day after day after day because the underhand motion does not put anywhere near – the stress on the shoulder is the overhand motion of a baseball pitch. So Jordy is not only probably the face of college softball, either the best or second best pitcher in the country, not only homegrown talent coming home, okay, but she can be on that field at the most important position on the defensive side of the diamond a lot, a lot more than a baseball pitcher. Okay, and why did she come home? And then I'm going to bring on Mr. Jared Crick. She wanted to come home. She was homesick. She wanted to grow the sport of softball in her home state. And she wanted to be Jordy Ball, the person. I think sometimes people forget. Not, we're not just names and faces on a video game. There's actual human beings under the helmets, behind those faces that you see on the court of the diamond or the mask they wear in softball. All right. Let's bring in Mr. Jared Crick again, a former All-American performer, two-time first team all big 12 defensive lineman for the huskers a man who finished with 20 career sacks for the big red how you doing mr jared crick i'm doing good brother how are you dude i'm glorious i enjoy any time we get a chat and i got i'm just gonna dive right into it i just put out a highlight tape of the 09 nebraska defense on my youtube channel cheap plug here go check out my brand new youtube channel give it a like a follow subscribe whatever you got to do on youtube here's my question what made the 09 defense so great. And here are some stats for those who may not know. They were the number one defense nationally at 10.4 points per game. And you compare that to some of the all-time great Husker defenses. Phenomenally phenomenal defenses. In 97, they gave up 16.5 points per game. 95, 13.6 points per game. 94, 12.5 points per game. And also, comparatively speaking, the national champions in 2009 were Alabama. They had the number two scoring defense in the country behind Nebraska giving up 11.7 points per game. So, Jared, what made that 9 defense for the Huskers the best defense in the country and maybe Nebraska's best defense of all time? Well, obviously, we had a lot of talent across the board, and, and we were pretty deep as well. But I think the biggest thing was just kind of everybody had a role and just did it to the best of their ability. Um, nobody tried to overstep their bounds, step out of their lane. Like, like I said, my role was to – you know, play my position, obviously, but I wasn't expected to go out and, you know, make a million plays, even though we ended up making a lot. And, you know, the buy-in was there. We had a great scheme that was catered to our tool set. I mean, like I said, we had a lot of hybrid guys that we eventually invented a defense for. So, uh, like I said, we were stacked. I think what maybe 
all of us at least got a crack at an NFL roster. Um, so that wasn't a problem. But like I said, guys were bought in. They were playing for each other. And, you know, it was a lot of fun seeing guys flying around. And, and that was, you know, that was it. It wasn't a great year. To, I mean, as far as, like, our record went. But, yeah, I mean, we we did some good things that year. So let's talk about that, though, because you ended up with four losses that year. But here's the deal. Three of your four losses were by a combined four points, a one-point loss at number 13 Virginia Tech, one-point loss to Texas, a two-point loss to Iowa State by a score of seven to nine. The offense had eight turnovers that day for the Huskers. Okay. Now, here, this is going to lead me to the obvious question, right? Should there have been put one second put back on the clock? I mean, that's the question that's burning in my mind. What do you think, Jared? Honestly, dude, ever since that game, I've done my absolute best to just put it out of sight, put it out of mind. So I haven't even really gone back and looked at, you know, replays of that last play. Um, but obviously, you know, that would have been awesome to at least have the game run out or just, you know, have us block the kick. But for whatever reason, it just wasn't meant to be the best kicker in the country. Just, you know, bombed one from like 50 to win it. So you got to give him respect. But obviously, that was a that's a tough way to go out, especially, you know, when you have a chance to, to win a Big 12 title. Um, you don't, Those don't come around every day. Dude, that is such a phenomenal answer. I'm going to be more direct. No, there should not have been one second put back on the clock. But your answer was phenomenal, my friend. All right. So here's something I don't think is talked about enough. You own the single game sack record. You had five in, in Nebraska football history, five sacks versus Baylor. Now, mm-hmm. I played a lot of baseball growing up, okay, basketball, football as well. But when you're like, you go five for five uh, at the plate on a particular day, it's like the ball looks huge. It looks like it's the size of three softballs. Then, you know, a week later, you might go for four with four strikeouts. The ball looks teeny tiny, like half the size of a ping pong ball. Was it just you were in a rhythm that day? Was it just the quarterback just looked like he was 450 pounds and he wasn't moving and you were just going to get him no matter what? What what was that game like for you? That had to be beyond awesome. Well, not not a lot of people know about biorhythms. Obviously, you do. Um, but they were just – they were on fire that day, man. Like, I couldn't do any wrong. And granted, Baylor's scheme going in, like, they were double teaming two the majority of the game, which left me one-on-one the majority of the time. They wanted to, you know, step back pass. They didn't really want to try to run the ball on us because, well, probably because they couldn't. But so, I mean, it was just, you know, I just got a ton of opportunities, opportunities you don't see in every, you know, every game. You don't get as many rushes as what we did that day. And like I said, I was one-on-one. I was going against a rookie, I think, and I just used my athletic ability um, to my advantage. I had a lot of people in the crowd, too, so I was playing a little bit more motivated. I think I had 30-some family members. Most of my family's from Texas, so uh, it was warm. Col- or Nebraska was cold at that time, so it was just good to be in hot weather again. And Like I said, nothing could go wrong for me that day. Like I said, just the biorhythms were just clicking. And, I mean, you know how that goes. So it was just one of them deals where you're just kind of in a trance, and when the game's over, you know, you won the game, you're excited, you're happy. And then finally, I think Coach Carl came up and, you know, when you're in the locker room and told me, hey, man, you just broke like a school record, like two of them at that time. And it's kind of like, oh, neato. So it was a good day, obviously, uh, kind of jump started my career. And um, really since then is when a lot of offenses started throwing double teams my way a whole lot more. And that's when you saw Sue start to pick up his stats. And then obviously he took that momentum into the, the, you know, the Heisman candidacy. So, uh, you know, it was, it was big for me personally, but it was, uh, I don't know if, you know, we don't have that great of a game defensively if we even win that game that day. And at that time we were coming off a two game losing streak where we needed a win. So, you know, it was, it was a lot of fun. Dude. I love that you use the word neato. Also, I love that, <laughs> that you call often. So. That's awesome. I love that you called the opposing offensive lineman in college football a rookie and not a freshman. That's a former NFL vet talking right there. I like that. All right. Now, you talked about Sue. Marky Ingram, 2009 Heisman winner, obviously had a great season. It was the closest margin of victory by a Heisman winner in the Heisman voting ever. Now, we're both biased. And I do remember a tweet that you sent out. I was in St. Louis, and I saw it that night. I'll let you answer now. I won't harken back to that tweet, but you voiced your opinion then. Should Sue have won the Heisman Trophy, in your humble opinion? Absolutely. 
And I think if you ask a lot of the kind of the media heads that did the voting that year, they would say the same thing. I think a lot of them um, voted before the Big 12 championship, so real prematurely. And I don't know how all that works per se, but, yeah, you ask a lot of guys, like, yeah, I voted for Ingram or, yeah, I voted for, you know, whoever the other guys were. But if I would have saw Sue at least in person one time or if I would have saw the Big 12 champion or voted after the Big 12 championship, obviously they would have changed their vote. and He would have been a unanimous Heisman winner. So, I mean, he's the Heisman winner in my book. Um, I don't – there was no better football player that stepped on the field that year than Sue. So – I would have loved to see him. I mean, I would have got a lot more publicity thrown my way if he had one because I think he had a, you know, essentially a victory speech all laid out. But, uh, you know, it was just, you know, that year we just weren't as lucky as what uh, we probably should have been. All right, ladies and gentlemen, send in your questions, comments, concerns, whatever you'd like to say. Call or text 402-464-5685. All right, what was it like playing – for a fiery Bo Pelini, and why did the players love him so much? Because he always had your back. And the thing is, the only time that Bo would, you'd see that kind of fiery side of Bo is when someone really messed up. And by that time, you know, the teammates would have got on him a whole lot worse than what you saw Bo get on. Bo was kind of the last resort you know, to handle out any, you know, punishments or anything like that. So someone really would have had to screw up in order to see that side of Bo. So that wasn't, you know, Bo 24-7 by by any means that wasn't him. Um, But he was, you know, he's a great, you know, football mind. Like I said, he essentially invented a defense for, you know, three guys who could play multiple positions. So we just invented a defense and it worked. Um, So he's, he's gotten a lot of bad rap. I know he's probably fell out of good grace of a lot of Nebraska fans will never get back in. But like I said, Bo Pelini's not a bad guy. He's a great football mind. Um, and he really does not get the respect that he probably deserves. Because like I said, he's a great coach. He had a good record. Um, and like I said, he developed a lot of guys, not only to become good football players and play on at the professional level, but a lot of people, you know, became better men because of Bo Pelini. All right. So I'm that guy that always asks the question that I want to ask. I will not badger or follow up because I let people answer however they want, but my job is to ask the question, and I will always do that respectfully. So I'm just going to put it out there. I don't know if you've ever commented on this, but here it is. Should Bo have been fired? I don't think so, unless they had a surefire guy that was you know, going to walk in the door and – you know, at least maintain that level of that standard of, you know, winning. I mean, cause you think about it, like now I don't know what happened, what the records were after I left, but as a starter, I won no less than 10 games. And I think most Nebraska fans today would be ecstatic to win 10 games again. Like I said, I, as a starter, I won no less than 10 games. So, and I think obviously Bo won no less than nine. So it's tough to say that, you know, as far from a, you know, a like winning standpoint, yeah, that's a that's a tough call. That probably shouldn't have happened. But if they're looking for a better fit for, you know, the state of Nebraska, I mean, maybe. I guess Bo probably, you know, wore out his welcome after a period of time. But, I mean, if you're looking at – if you're going off wins, which, you know, at the end of the day is really what matters in collegiate sports, I mean, obviously we can sit there and say, like, oh, yeah, the student athlete bit and this and that. But at the end of the day, the NCAA is looking, are they in the black or are they in the red? You know, most athletic departments, are we in the black or are we in the red? Well, if we're not winning, we're going to probably be in the red. I mean, there's, you know, certain circumstances that work. Nebraska is probably one of them. But uh, like I said, if you're, if you're, you know, truly value winning and you had a guy who won no less than nine, uh, that's, that's a real tough call, especially if you don't have like a Nick Saban or somebody like that on deck who can come in and at least maintain that standard. Uh, you know, it's obviously hindsight's everything, but at that time I was, a lot of former players and even to this day, the guys that I played with are still pretty baffled that Nebraska did that. And they're kind of reaping what they're sowing right now. Yeah, I was, I was in D.C. with a few guys that played for him, whether it be uh, Dejon Gomes, Niles Paul, Will Compton came in just as I was exiting D.C. 
they definitely had their thoughts on that. I had mine as well at the time, but I want to look to the current coaching staff and the man in charge of our defensive line in this 3-3-5 defense right now, Mr. Terrence Knight, Mr. Pot Roast. What are your thoughts on him as Nebraska's new defensive line coach going forward? I think he's going to be good. You know, I've always heard good things about Pyros. You know, my time in the league, he was in Denver the year before I got there. So obviously I heard a lot of stories about him. Great guy. Uh, I think he's super charismatic. Obviously he's just in his kind of coaching infancy. So he's going to, he's going to get better as it goes, obviously as he gets more experience. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm excited kind of to see, I'm really excited to kind of see how this defense is going to work, especially in the big 10 where, Teams are going to line up 21, 22, 12, 13 still. Um, having three guys with their hand in the dirt uh, hasn't exactly worked, you know, if you don't have NFL caliber linemen. Um, but we'll see. Uh, it'll be nice to see what they morph into. But I think Terrence is probably that dude to teach that two-gapping scheme where instead of, you know, just, you know, busting up a gap, um, you're essentially, you know, taking on two or a guy, double teams, taking on two gaps. I think he's the right dude for that. So, uh as far as how he's doing with the kids now and, you know, how he's going to do with the recruits, I don't know that much. But I know I like him. He's a good guy. I went and met him. And I think he's going to do well. And like I said, I think he's going to keep getting better as time goes on. So that, that actually leads perfectly into my next question. I think you partially addressed it already. But the three three five defense, what were your thoughts when you first found out that we were going to run it and what you've heard since? Because Matt Rule likes the flexibility. He likes the versatility. He likes the fact that... It's like Nebraska's old school option offense. You had to learn an entirely different scheme on defense getting ready for the old school Nebraska option offense, and you had a week to do it. Matt Rule wants that, but the defensive version in this 3 3 5 scheme and its versatility for the opposing offenses. So, what are your thoughts on this 3 3 5 scheme? What was your reaction? We heard we were going to run it and things of that nature. Right. I, I'm, um, I'm optimistic. I mean, like I said, we essentially did the same thing when I was in school. We kind of just morphed into whatever defense, you know, the offense, you know, threw at us. So it's just dependent on whether they have the guys or not. And really the biggest thing, I'm not too concerned if they have the, you know, the right three interior guys because, you know, I think they'll get those guys in uh, in a good position there. But it's, do you have guys who can set the edge? Um, that's my biggest thing. You've got guys that can go up against, you know, a six seven three hundred twenty five 325-pound offensive tackle from Ohio State and set the edge, force the ball back inside. Or, you know, guys that can take on a, you know, tackle tight end combo or, and that's the, kind of what I'm curious about seeing. Like I've seen a lot of teams try to set the edge from deep, um, with an outside linebacker. But by that time, you're starting to see in today's age, you know, offensive tackles can get on you pretty quick. Um, you know, they're, they're getting faster and faster. So they can be three yards deep on a, you know, outside linebacker and essentially you have no edge then a running back can, you know, do whatever he wants. So. I'll be interested to see if, you know, they're going to run more of like a 5-2 out of it to try to stop the run. Um, It'll be interesting. I haven't really looked into, you know, 3-3-5s extensively, especially not the guy now. Um, I know, obviously, in generalities, I know what a 3-3-5 is, and it can morph into just about anything. So if they can stop the run, um, you know, with whatever they're wanting to do, I think they'll be in good shape. But... Like I said, I've seen a lot of teams, especially TCU last year, where they're three three five. I mean, against guys like Georgia, and I know Georgia is a different animal altogether, but those offensive tackles got on them outside linebackers real quick. And if they get their mitts on you, I mean, it's over. Like I said, especially when you got offensive tackles the size they are nowadays. All right, last question I got for you. You and I keep in, in contact every so often via text, sometimes phone calls, but for the fine folks at home who are curious, what is Jared Crick up to nowadays? Yep, so we're back in our uh, home area of Dawson County, Nebraska. Um, personally, I'm, I'm doing insurance now, um, so we're back home. Um, we wanted our boys to be close to their cousins, both set of grandparents, aunts, uncles alike, and everybody's back in our area, so we just figured it was the best move to go ahead and move back to what we know, a slower pace of life, and we don't have any regrets, man. I mean, it's awesome uh, to be able to – just kind of relax. Don't have to worry about sitting in traffic, decompressing, and that kind of thing. It's, it's been real nice to be home when I got a lot of friends who are still back home. So uh, it's been good, man. We're, uh, we're enjoying it. Well, I appreciate your time. Thank you for joining me and keep enjoying that home life, man. Absolutely. I appreciate you having me on brother. For sure, man. Thanks. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a quick break 
pay a bill or two. When we get back, I want to go through some of the, we got three commits yesterday to Nebraska's recruiting class for 2024, but then I want to get to your fan questions. The people segment is coming up right after the break. Don't go anywhere. Sandhills Global is hiring. Check out sandhills.jobs for more information. Sandhills is looking to fill hundreds of new openings in sales, traveling support, software development, web design, and more. Sandhills has a professional culture and is fast paced with a focus on growth, innovation, and leading edge technologies. Career and internship opportunities are available at our global headquarters in Lincoln, Nebraska. Apply today at sandhills.jobs. You've driven by GE Landscape Supply countless times, likely without even knowing, at 6701 Cornusker Highway. Now it's time to stop in. GE Landscape Supply sells to homeowners and contractors with a vast selection of landscaping and construction materials. They sell in bulk to save you money, and you can buy anything from a five-gallon bucket to a semi-load. And don't forget, they deliver anywhere. Stop by 6701 Cornusker Highway from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday to Friday and 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Saturdays. Go to GELandscapeSupply.com for more info or call 402-467-1627. Getting experience to jumpstart a meaningful career can be difficult and education can cost a fortune. Luckily, AmeriCorps can be the solution. With AmeriCorps, you'll earn a stipend and education award while helping people. Plus, you'll gain professional skills and make connections to help you build your career. If you're ready to start a career you can be proud of, visit serve.nebraska.gov slash service to find a program for you. Paid for by Serve Nebraska, aired with the Nebraska Broadcasters Association and this station. Tailored Life is now open in Bennett. Make the short drive down Highway 2 for tons of items for your home, for both indoors and outdoors. Check out their variety of potted trees, shrubs, vines, perennials, and colorful annuals. Plus, porch pots and landscape lighting to enhance the outside of your home. Don't forget their home goods for indoors. Plus, convenient drinks and snacks, moats which are produced locally. Visit Tailored Life today in Bennett and stay tuned to their Facebook page at Taylor Life 360 for food truck events coming up. Hi, it's Charlie Stone again, and with me on the line, Andy Goodyear, General Manager of Honda of Lincoln. Andy, I know how proud you and everyone at the dealership are to earn the prestigious Honda President's Award year after year, 17 times. Tell our listeners what it means to you and your customers. Thanks, Charlie. Yes, yeah, all of us are extremely proud to have earned this award, and I want all of our customers to know It's not just earned by one person's effort. It's the entire dealership, sales, parts, and our amazing service department. 17 times. Wow. How does that compare to other Honda dealers? This award is only given to the most elite dealerships that demonstrate excellence. We really do strive to go above and beyond for the ultimate customer experience before and after the sale, Charlie. That's why for 2022, Honda of Lincoln is once again Nebraska's number one volume Honda dealer. Come experience the Honda of Lincoln way of doing business, 27th and Yankee Hill Road, or online at HondaOfLincoln.com. Rashawn Jackson here for Bauer Infrastructure, a veteran-owned local company proudly serving Lincoln, Lancaster County, and the surrounding areas. Bauer provides quality work at an affordable price, and they're growing rapidly. If you want to experience a career with a fast-paced, family-friendly environment, visit BauerInfrastructure.com. They have top-of-the-line benefits, year-round work, even through the winter. Bauer, usher in the new era of infrastructure to an area near you. And as always, go Big Red! Gaina Trucking is hiring CDL Class A and B drivers. Gaina Trucking guarantees a 40-hour work week year-round, and their strong team culture makes it not a job, but a career. Gaina Trucking offers health, vision, and dental insurance, 401k with company match, an employee assistance program, and other bonus programs. Build a better career today with great team culture at Gaina Trucking. Learn more and apply today at GainaTrucking.com. Are you working in or looking to get into the electrical construction industry? The Electrical Workers of Local Union 265 are now hiring licensed journeymen and apprentices and are offering great pay and benefits. Call Mike at 402-875-1034 to apply. Start your electrical career today. Guys, it's that time again. Another 10-week challenge at Farrell's Extreme Body Shaping is starting on July 8th. 
I joined Ferals a little over a year ago, and with their help, I've lost over 125 pounds and can confidently say I'm in the best shape of my life. The 10-Week Challenge combines kickboxing, strength training, and nutrition coaching in a way that is approachable and achievable for any skill level. And ticket listeners, you can get $150 off the cost of enrollment. Head to theticketfm.com and click on the banner on the homepage to learn more. Ferals Extreme Body Shaving at 70th and Vine or 40th and Yankee Hill. You're listening to Adam Carricker on The Ticket on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for the people's segment, the final segment of the show. But real quick, I do want to address the three commits in Nebraska football got yesterday following their Friday night lights that they had last Friday. All right, so first we're going to start off with Mr. Jake Peters an offensive lineman from Cedar Falls, Iowa, 6'3", 265 pounds. Now, we were his only Power 5 offer. A couple of these guys that I'm going to talk about, we were their only Power 5 offer. But you got to keep in mind, Matt Rule wants to find diamonds in the rough. He wants the right kind of people, the right mindset. He wants big frames. He wants guys he can develop, guys who are going to buy in. Now, Jake has has had some interest from Iowa and Iowa State. Okay, no interest. I'm sorry, no offer. I'm sorry, he has interest, but no offers as of yet. Now, he has chosen Nebraska over Air Force and Army and some other schools as well, including Coastal Carolina. But what got him an offer from the Big Red was Matt Rule and Donovan Riola saw traits on tape. This is identifying talent with somewhere else might miss it. Hopefully, Matt Rule and Donovan um, Riola are correct, but they saw some things on tape that they liked. All right, next, I want to talk about defensive back, potential safety, 600, I'm sorry, 6'2", 600 pounds would be really, really big for a safety, Six foot two, 180 pounds. Kalen Barta. Okay, now, he's NU's first high school recruit from Kansas in three years since 2020. Now, he has good size and a good frame, okay, to add on muscle, all right, and he can fit multiple spots in a 3-3-5 defense, potentially a safety, potentially move him all over the place, depending on how he develops and how quickly he improves, okay? And then I want to talk about linebacker or safety or rover, that's what's kind of interesting about this 3-3-5 defense. Guys can go all over the place. There's f- flexibility. There's versatility. All right, Braylon Prude. Now, six foot five, 190 pounds. Again, we're his lone power five offer. I'm going to say it again. This is what Matt Rule prides himself on, looking for diamonds in the rough and developing them, getting players and developing them into really good players. He's our fifth Texas commit in the 2020 class so far. We've got about a dozen commits at this point. Now, he has family who played in the NFL. And this particular guy has great, a great frame to add muscle and size. And if you watched him, he likes to hit. I like people who like to hit. That excites me. Okay. Now, I think that's everybody that I was supposed to chat about when it comes to the three commits yesterday. Yes, as I look at my list of my wonderfully, horribly <laughs> written notes, I once got a C in handwriting. True story. All A's and a C. And my dad was mad in the fifth grade. And rightfully so. But let's get to the people's segment. Let's get to the questions. All right. And if you want to get a question in before we go off air today, call or text 402 464 5685. Our first question is from Bryce. Why do you think Bo got such a raw deal at Nebraska? Do you think his comments after the OSU game was what really did him in? I don't think it's what really did him in, but I think it's really started to turn things. Okay. Bo was a fiery guy. He was the exact opposite of what we had here for a quarter of a century, which was a very calm Tom Osborne, a guy who was very measured with his words. Bo is very fiery. Bo is very vocal. Bo is going to be Bo. And that's part of what I asked Jared Crick. That's part of what people loved, what the players loved about Bo Pelini. He was my defensive coordinator, my redshirt freshman year as well. It was no different. The players, for the one year he was our D coordinator before they let him go and let Solich go, okay, the players loved him. He was fiery. He'd rip into you like a monkey on a cupcake. But the, the players loved him because at the end of the day, like Mr. Jared Crick said, he had your back. And if players know that you care about them and you'll have their back, they will love you for it. Okay. So I know for a fact, your Ohio State comments after the game did hurt him. Um, the first time I ever chatted with Scott Frost after he was hired, he was worried about leaks within the football facility. It's one of the first things he brought up to me was leaks. And he brought up Bo's comments after the Ohio State, just out of nowhere, he brought him up to me about them getting out somehow. And you got to lock it down in there. So that was something Frost was concerned about, okay? And again, my first conversation with him after he got hired, he brought that up out of nowhere. I didn't ask about it, okay? So it's something that did not help him. I remember at the time, 
my bigger concern was how did it get out as well? But those comments absolutely did not help him. It did not endear him when you're saying types of things like that about the fans. You know, they're not going to respond with butterfly kisses, so to speak. All right. So Bo's going to bow. Bo's going to win games. Bo's going to be fiery. And I do know that he had a bit of a rough relationship as time went on with some of the boosters and, and other individuals in certain positions. And so when, when the, those relationships become contentious, I mean, there is a little bit of politics involved in this. There was a little bit of hierarchy involved in this. And, you know, I, I don't think that helped Bo. I don't think that's a shock to anybody. But it's also why his players loved him at the same time because he was raw and he was honest and you knew exactly what you were going to get from him as a player. Some of the folks higher up on the chain, maybe not as crazy about that type of approach. So I think that had as much to do with anything. Also, let's be honest, Jared didn't bring it up, but there was there were some losses in there uh, and big time games where the score was lopsided. OK, and people are willing to forget people who or forgive, maybe even forget if a coach acts a certain way. Look at Nick Saban. OK, and I talked about this on my Big Ten show last week. Nick Saban is not exactly the nicest guy on planet Earth to the media, but he wins. OK, now he doesn't exactly yell and scream at them, but he ain't exactly nice to him. There's times when he's a flat out jerk to him, but nobody says boo. Why? Because he wins. Whether people like it or not, people want to admit it or not. Winning cures all. Ninety nine point nine percent of things. If you're winning, you can get away with them. Ninety nine point nine. OK, so had Bo had those games been more competitive, had he won some of those games? Maybe they don't put a second back on the clock versus Texas. Maybe some of those things are viewed a little bit differently. Instead of, you know, certain phrases being used to describe his fieriness, maybe people just call him passionate and fiery as opposed to how they may have viewed it because if you don't win those games, they're going to view things differently. If you win them, they're going to use different adjectives, more kind adjectives to describe a coach when you're winning because that's just how it works. All right. Bryce has another question. Thank you, Bryce. On Jordy Ball, can she maintain her high level of performance, though? Question mark. That's a great question. Okay. She wanted, she was a little homesick. She wanted to get softball more well known in the state of Nebraska. She wanted to come back and be Jordy Ball, the person. Those are all perfectly normal things. She's a human being. I completely understand and get it. I smell what she's cooking, as The Rock would say. Now, does that maybe indicate I'm tired of a few things? Maybe this is tougher than people might realize constantly, you know, bearing the load on certain things. Does it indicate a little bit of burnout, so to speak? I don't think so, but she's a human being. People go up and down, you know, maybe if, if, uh, if that is the case, I'm sure the Huskers coaching staff and the softball side of things will, will recognize that and give her any appropriate time off. I'm not saying that that's the case, just being an athlete and being in certain positions, it can be rough. It can be tough. And maybe a change of scenery will be a great thing for her. Obviously, she was looking forward to it. Do I think she'll maintain her same level of performance? I would be surprised if, she's didn't, if she didn't. She came back to Nebraska for a reason. She came back to Nebraska to make an impact and make a difference. She's a human being. She's going to deal with things just like a human being would. But at the end of the day, if you watch her, she's a fiery competitor. Most well-known softball player in college softball at the moment for a reason. I'm excited to watch her and what she can do for the Big Red going forward. And I think she's going to make an impact, and I think Nebraska softball is going to be better for it. All right, final question. What do you think, this is from Cliff, what do you think about the upcoming season at Nebraska? Man, it's crazy. For years, I've said Nebraska has more talent than any team in the Big Ten West. For years, I don't want to say it hasn't mattered, but it hasn't mattered in the win-loss section. Okay, we had schemes that were working, but the win-loss record was not. Obviously, we got a new man at the helm. He's going to take a, a, a different approach. Hopefully, vastly different results follow. What I think we're going to see is I think we're going to see a team that has a better culture, that's a little bit better together, that you're going to see improvements as the season goes along. As the season goes along, there's probably going to be some bonehead plays. There's probably going to be some plays that leave a scratch in our head because it's going to take a little bit of time to get this thing rolling, to get things figured out, to get the culture actually changed, to get guys acclimated and accustomed to how Coach Matt Rule wants to do things. I think there's going to be some exciting moments, maybe some upsets that excite us, maybe some bonehead moments that got us going, what the heck's going on? And just remember, it's still either way, it's year one. 
I do think I'll talk about my win loss record prediction more in the future, but I'm optimistic we can at least get to a bowl game. All right. Stay tuned for College World Series baseball. And until next time, Husker Nation, go big red. And always remember throw the bounds. Hey, CNC machinists, do you feel like you're in a dead-end job with your boss hovering over your shoulder? That's so annoying. Not at Garner Industries. We provide the opportunity and trust our CNC machinists to bring the talent. I'm Bob Williams, HR Director at Garner Industries, and we're looking for new team members in our CNC department. At Garner Industries, you'll work in a clean, climate-controlled, and safe environment with team members who want to see you succeed. You will also enjoy four-day work weeks, great benefits, and a positive working culture. Interested? Apply on our career page at GarnerIndustries.com. Why are some people more successful? Is it talent and determination, or did they recognize an opportunity? Discover a career that lets you help families reach their financial goals as you build lasting professional relationships. One with unlimited income potential from Modern Woodman, a leading fraternal financial services provider. I'm Modern Woodman Regional Director Sean Erickson. Call me at 402-483-6515 to learn about career opportunities. Modern Woodman of America. Touching lives, securing futures. Are you ready to upgrade your combine? Don't wait. Act now to choose from the widest selection of used combines at Acres Equipment. Acres, the nation's largest John Deere combine dealer, is offering 2.9% interest for 60 months on over 100 pre-owned combines. Go to Acres.com to view a huge inventory of low-hour, late-model John Deere combines. Find what you like and we'll deliver it to your farm for free. Acres, solutions for every field. Rosie Sports Bar and Grill. Open for lunch and dinner at 10th and P or at 1501 Center Park Road. The Butchery by Venue is Lincoln's premier specialty grocers. Take the quality of venue home with you with our hand-cut steaks, handcrafted burgers, and locally sourced offerings. Browse our wide selection of specialty products designed to enhance your dining experiences with cheeses, spices, sauces, and more. We also have an exclusive collection of liquors, whiskeys, and bourbons at prices you're sure to love. Stop in to the Butchery by Venue today, located in our Venue at Home storefront at 70th and Pioneers, just two doors down from Venue Restaurant and Lounge.